Let me, it just brought to mind three, three times in, in my life, I've been in crowds where the N word and bigoted stuff was, uh, against blacks was spoken the most. One, what I, I talked about before I, I, on my show, I don't know if I were on your show, how, how uh, a friend of mine who was in the Cubs Scout, his father turned out to be the Long Island Ku Klux Klan leader. And I accidentally went to a Ku Klux Klan meeting with them thinking I was going to play volleyball and picnic. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and I, I first thought they were gay guys in dresses and then they, in white dress, and then they put mm -hmm. on the hood. And I'm like, holy fucking shit. But, so that was, that was it. But the two other times when the N-word flew as much, or if not more, involved all black people. One, July 4th, 1998 in Minnesota, when I saved this white woman who's trying to break up a gang fight between Ethiopians and Eritreans. And then, mm -hmm. you N-word, they were kind you and these, and I, I, I said to this woman, you can't stop these people. They've been killing each other and hating each other before there were white people. Mm -hmm. And the third time that, that it happened was uh, when I, I uh, when I worked a uh, volunteer at my mother's senior citizen center and I was driving people to voting and I, and uh, another senior center asked me to help drive people over there. And it was mostly black people. About a third of the black people in this black senior center back in the 1980s were Africans, not mm -hmm. African-Americans, but Africans. Africans who come to the US talk about the N word African Americans, like yeah. you wouldn't believe, they they think uh, uh, black Americans are, are the lowest scum of the earth, and that they deserve what white people did to them. Yeah, well, let, let's let's talk about that because I mean, like you know, this is this is considered not politically correct. Uh, people always want to like uh, you know. Uh, sort of hide the fact that there's tons of racial tension between Hispanic communities and, and blacks and also, you know, blacks coming out of, blacks. yeah. And, and Jews and blacks. I mean, I mean, when it comes to, for example, you know, hate crimes in New York city, all the attention recently was on the, uh, the spike in uh, hate crimes against Asians. But, um, you know, even if you sort of control for population, the crimes against Jews in, in New York city, they're four times as high, even with, Right, the, the spikes against Asians, and that mostly has to do with the fact that you know you have Jews uh, living in uh, New York City uh, in in neighborhoods that are very close to Black neighborhoods or within Black neighborhoods. So it makes sense that with enough sort of interactions, right? I think it was something like 120 incidents last year. You would have you know 120 is incidents potentially of it's going to be primarily Black people, right? Uh, you know, robbing people that are you know close to them. There's nothing special about it. But bringing up these numbers uh, makes it seem, you know, kind of nefarious. But, you know, the second that you start thinking these kinds of like very ordinary human interactions are nefarious, that's when you start engaging in, in you know, the, the sort of like black noble savage myth. I mean, they, they do it even with, um, you know, like about most of the attacks against Asians uh, in, in uh, New York City recently have come from black people. And it's very predictable as to why that would be the case. Uh, these are like half of these people are, are homeless. And they have, you know, mental issues. They've been incarcerated before. It's very predictable that if you have human beings in the margins of society, you introduce some sort of volatile factor, some new volatile factor in their life, such as coronavirus. Of course, they're going to have bigoted views. Of course, they're going to lash out in volatile fashion because this is what life is like, right? Uh, uh, let, let me give you a corollary. Here in Texas, a lot of Vietnamese came. Uh, after the Vietnamese War, and, and and they became fishermen along the Gulf Coast, and what what's happened, and I, I've seen I, I've seen this and heard this from people who lived along the Gulf Coast, and I, I've also looked up online and stuff. A lot of the people people Mexicans there, there are not many blacks uh, along the, the Gulf Coast. So I guess that probably are here or there, but in a lot of towns, Mexicans were at the bottom of the economic barrel. And when the Vietnamese came in, they were more successful than the Mexicans. And there became tensions between Mexicans and the Vietnamese in these small outlets, uh, not between Mexicans and the white people, not between Vietnamese and the white people, but from the newcomers, the Vietnamese, who somehow to the Mexican, to the Mexicans were given favor because that's mm -hmm. why the, they were economically doing better. In a very similar way, I'm sure part of the reasons that Asians are now being attacked in New York probably has to do with a lot of uh, the black people, like you said, if they're mentally ill, probably are like, how are these people, how did they get their business? How did they open a restaurant? You know, they must be kissing the man's ass kind mm -hmm. of thing.